Okay, uh, welcome back. We studied how the uh, general tree search algorithm works. And now let's have a look how general graph search algorithm uh, perform the searching task for a problem. So there is a difference between tree search algorithm and graph search algorithm. And uh, we saw in the last slide that the problem with tree search algorithm is that tree search can visit a state multiple times. So there is a possibility of uh, revisited uh, states. Uh, you can say repeated states. So in tree, uh, we have this issue of uh, repeated states and it is very expensive. If you, uh, if an agent revisit uh, the states that has been already visited. So this issue uh, is fixed in the graph search algorithm. And how, let, let's see how does it fix uh, this issue. It fix uh, this issue by keeping track of all visited states. So there is uh, another set or a structure introduced in, and it is named as explore set. So in the tree search algorithm, you can see we, uh, we remove the state that is visited from the frontier or open list here we remove but we keep those states in another list and the name of that list is explore set so let's let's see uh, how does this algorithm work if a newly found successor to next is already known it won't be inserted in the uh, open list so if it is already visited it is not going to be inserted in the uh, frontier list, uh, list. Rather, uh, uh, it will stay in the explored list. So the graph search algorithm, it takes the problem. Once you formulated a problem, uh, the problem is uh, handed over to the graph search algorithm. And uh, as a result, it will return a solution. Or if there is no solution, then null, you can say, a failure. So first, uh, you need to initialize the frontier list and initially it will be empty. Or uh, if there is uh, initial state already known, then the all the successors of that state will be inserted in the frontier list, just like the example we have seen earlier, this one. So if this is the initial state, these uh, successors will be inserted in the frontier list. Okay, uh, now we need we also need to initialize the explored set uh, data structure that will be empty initially because we haven't explored any uh, state or any node yet. Now let's uh, iterate this loop. If the, if the frontier is empty, then they turn failure. Okay, if there is uh, no nothing in the frontier, it means that there is no success and this is the final state. And if this state is not a goal state, then uh, there is no solution exist. So there is no solution for this problem. So that's why if the frontier is empty, then you need to return failure. Okay, if this is not the case, then choose a leaf node and remove it from the frontier. So get a, a leaf from the frontier list. And you, you are going to, now the agent is going to explore the successor of this particular uh, leaf. So the leaf is removed from the frontier. If the node contains, okay, now if this leaf state, or this uh, uh, leaf node, is a goal state, then you need to return uh, the solution, the number of actions, 
all the actions performed from initial state till this state. So that is the solution to the problem. Uh, if this is not the solution, then you have you have to do. Uh, you need to since this this uh, uh, node has been visited. This node is explored. So now this leaf node should be removed from the frontier and should be added to the explore set. This was not the case in the, the tree search algorithm. Here just you need to remove it from the open list or frontier and you just uh, uh, I mean you don't you, you don't keep track of this node. Here the case is different. Once you remove this from the frontier you need to keep it in the explored set and this this uh, this data or this information uh, can be used uh, not to visit a state more than once now expand the chosen node adding the resulting nodes to the frontier so now once you decided to uh, get to this node this leaf now this this leaf should be added to the explored list and all these should be uh, added to the frontier list because now these are the candidates for further expansion. Okay. Uh, while expanding the successor of the uh, this this node, you have to keep uh, an eye on the explored set. If any of the successor is in the ex explored set that should not be added to the frontier because that set has already been visited now see in this case uh, this is the successor of uh, uh, this node so if this is a tree search this should be added to the frontier now this is graph search in graph search this has already been visited and this should be in the explored list so now when you are expanding the successor of this particular uh, node, this should not be in the frontier list, this should be in the exp uh, explored list. This is the difference between uh, graph search and tree search. Okay. Now, we have seen uh, two way to represent a problem and then uh, perform searching. Okay. Now see how you implement the states or nodes etc. How you perform implementation of what we have seen in the graphs and uh, tree. Okay, uh, there is a difference between a state and a node. A state is just a representation of the physical configuration. So this is a state. It has just, uh, uh, I mean, the tiles and uh, the complete grid. This is a state. But node is a bit a bit different. Node has uh, node is something that is more than a state. Okay, so the complete configuration of this state, its parent from where does we arrive to this state? Okay, uh, what are the possible actions we can take from this state? And what is the uh, cost? What is the cost of uh, the path from the initial state till this state. So all these information, state configuration, actions, information of parent and the total path cost, these information are stored in a data structure and that data structure is termed as a node. So there is difference between a state and a node. Now uh, we need to implement another function and that the that function is named as child node function. Now what is the functionality of this function? The child node function takes a parent node and an action and returns the resulting child node. So this is basically the implementation of the exploration. Now a child function will uh, take this so, for example, uh, let's consider this example. 
if you input if you give input uh, to the child function this array and uh, you specify in action go to C view so this uh, array the current state or current location plus the action uh, will be uh, given to the child function and it will give you the state the resultant state that you will arrive after this action while uh, while sitting on this current state so this is basically this is the implementation of a transition model so this is a transition model this child node function is a transition model it takes parent node the current node and an action and gave you the resulting uh, node so this is the implementation of uh, this is the implementation of uh, configuration model so here you can see this algorithm this uh, basically takes problem and you know what does problem mean problem the complete formulation of the problem states and goals and uh, action etc so it takes problem it takes uh, the current state that is parent and one action is going to be uh, formed while sitting in the parent node so uh, as a result it will uh, return a node that is going to be the child node of the current parent node okay uh, okay it has to return a node with so this node will uh, will have these these all these properties because node is uh, something that is I mean that is above the state okay so what would be the state for the node parent state the current state plus action so the result you know this result is basically transition model so it will give you the next state okay uh, now what is going to be the parent of the next state so this current state is uh, the parent of that newly, newly uh, born child so action that is performed while sitting in the current state and the current state is going to be the parent state of the new child okay now the we need to calculate path cost and you know path cost is basically uh, total actions performed and their cost since from starting uh, state that is initial state till this particular state so you, uh, you need to calculate the uh, path cost so the path cost is the total cost till parent plus the step cost from parent to child so for example if uh, the agent has traveled from uh, state A to B and then B to C and then C to D and now this D to E uh, D is the parent and E is the child so we want to calculate uh, path cost from D to E so we will what we will do is we will uh, this D node will have the total cost from A to D and this is the this is that total cost this is uh, the cost from A to D and now this is the cost the, we normally uh, uh, name it step cost so this is the cost from D to E we are going to add this step cost to the total cost del D and that is going to be the total uh, path cost del E from A uh, this is the implementation of child node function and uh, this is a kind of you know, uh, implementation of the uh, transition model of the problem.
that that's it. Uh, we have uh, in this lecture we studied uh, first what is problem solving agent, and then uh, we studied uh, how to formulate formal formulation of a problem and what uh, what abstraction is and why we perform abstraction then we uh, we saw some example problems and their formulation so we we, uh, we went through uh, some toy examples and we then we uh, studied real world problems and then uh, different representation and uh, searching uh, structures. We studied uh, graph, we studied tree, and we we, uh, we saw a difference between uh, graph and tree. And then implementation of uh, a node. That what is the difference between state and node? So node is basically uh, implementation of state plus uh, other information as well. And then we uh, we saw the implementation of uh, child node function that actually guide us from a parent to a child node. Well,